Hi there. In this screencast, uh, we're going to talk about how we get from this code in all of our genes. We all know that the DNA stores the genes that make us who we are. But we're going to discuss how we get from that code to a finished product. So in other words, how do we get to a structure that's going to lead to our phenotypes? So this is the path that we're going to describe here. From DNA and how we make the proteins. The proteins are the structures that build the cells, which eventually are going to build our bodies. Uh, just as an example, I threw an old college picture in there. No big deal. And we often see this referred to as the central dogma of life. This was proposed by this dude right here, um, Francis Crick. He was a he was one of the structure determiners, remember, with, uh, with uh, Watson, um, Watson and Crick in 1953 finally nailed down the structure of the DNA molecule. But um, he came up with this a few late years later, and it just describes the flow of genetic information in a cell and eventually how we get to that trait. Um, DNA makes RNA, RNA makes proteins. It's those proteins that actually are going to determine the trait or the phenotype for the trait. So that's what we're going to look at in more detail. We need to remember where this takes place as well. So the DNA is the genes, right? The genes are specific segments of a DNA molecule in the chromosome and a process called transcription that we'll look at. This DNA uh, in eukaryotes is never going to leave the nucleus. So the blueprint actually needs to be kind of decoded, and the messenger RNA is what's going to do that. The messenger RNA is specific for the DNA molecule. That mRNA is then free to leave to the ribosome, where, which is you know the protein factory. The ribosome, which is made up of the rRNA, is the, is the site in the cytoplasm of where the proteins are actually built by linking together a specific order of the building blocks of a protein, those are called amino acids. And remember that the protein is what's going to determine the phenotype, whether it's a protein that is a hormone or a structural protein or an enzyme that catalyzes chemical reactions, it's going to carry out the actual or express the trait or the phenotype. So the first process is called transcription. The DNA code in all its A's, T's, C's, and G's, the specific order of nucleotide bases along the sequence of DNA, is transcribed into a sequence of RNA, specific RNA called mRNA or messenger RNA. You should know this already, but this is a review that the RNA has some similar characteristics to DNA, but also some um, specific differences. The nitrogenous bases there is a, a substitution of a base called uracil instead of the thiamine. So if you are looking at a sequence of letters that determine that are, that are representative of a nucleic acid, if you see a T, the letter T for thiamine, you know you're talking about DNA. If you, know, if you see a U, you know that it's uracil and you know that the sequence is, is an RNA strand. RNA is uh, single-stranded. Typically, it's, a, it's shorter than the long, long millions of base pairs that a DNA molecule is. And there's different types of RNA. Of course, just these three are what we will focus on. The process of transcription, making of the mRNA from a, from a DNA strand, it kind of in a broad sense looks a lot like um, RNA replication where we need to um, unwind the DNA molecule, split it, and then using complementary base pairing rules, we're going to transcribe an mRNA sequence. And um, just by the way, something to note here, that transcription is a process that builds all of the RNA types of molecules. Uh, we focus on mRNA as a part of the protein synthesis uh, kind of flow from gene to protein, but transcription takes place to build all sorts of RNA molecules. So back to this, um, the transcribed DNA strand is just like in replication, it's called the template strand. And the untranscribed DNA strand is really gonna have the same sequence, 
of bases as RNA. Just remember that there's a substitution of one particular base, but that's the coding strand. And the enzyme here, the one that you need to identify and, and know, is again a polymerase. Remember there was a DNA polymerase. Here we have an RNA polymerase, which is the enzyme that catalyzes the building of the mRNA sequence. As we just mentioned, uh, the process of transcription builds all RNA sequences. You don't need to differentiate between the different types of RNA polymerase. Uh, we're, the fact of the matter for this course, we will basically just focus on um, RNA polymerase type 2, and it's the one that we're, we're just going to consider when we say RNA polymerase, because we're going to focus on uh, transcribing the genes in DNA into mRNA. Like so many other things, the process of transcription can be a pretty complex process. Um, these are the three phases that we need to, that you need to recognize, and you need to be able to give, have a basic understanding of each. And by their names, it's a description of what they actually do. So the initiation, how we actually get the transcription process started, elongation is just the process of adding RNA nucleotide bases um, together in sequence, and then termination. What is the signal that actually tells this process to stop? The process begins with uh, what's called a promoter. It's a specific sequence of DNA, and that's really all that we need to know about it, but the promoter is, is the sequence to which the polymerase that we just mentioned is going to bind. So since the RNA polymerase is the is really going to catalyze the actual building of the RNA sequence, it's going to bind at the promoter. So it tells us where to start this whole process. And of course, because DNA is double-stranded, it's going to tell us which strand is going to become the template strand. So the transcription initiates, initiation site is at the promoter. So you can go ahead and just pause this, review what we just said, but initiation, initiation, the first step in transcribing the DNA into messenger RNA. So much like the replication process that we've already talked about, elongation again is just the building of the mRNA sequence here. And we don't need to know about uh, the number of base pairs at a time, but please, please note that it's going to read the template strand of DNA in a three prime to five prime direction, again, because the nucleotides are again going to be added to the three prime end of the new strand. So the three prime end of the growing mRNA strand is the, is the end that you're going to continue to build and add new nucleotides. So this process, again, is going to end up with an RNA transcript, the newly built RNA sequence that is anti-parallel to the DNA template strand as you see some similarities again with replication. Always think of complementary base pairing rules. Again, the RNA, there's a slight difference. This is something that you have to get over, it has to become natural to you, that the RNA molecule is going to have a substituted base of uracil. It's just one of the, it's one of the characteristics that makes RNA unique from the DNA molecule. It's a different nucleotide sequence, it's a different um, it's a different macromolecule, but it's always going to be complementary base pairing. RNA polymerase's job is to make sure that the correct order of RNA nucleotides is complementary to the DNA sequence. Finally, we have termination. Again, it's another specific sequence that is recognized on the template strand. So there's a lot of different enzymes, of course, that are involved in termination. It depends on the type of um, the type of organism or cell that we're even uh, dealing with. So there is some variation there, but it simply is going to be the site on the DNA template strand that is going to initiate. Well, I shouldn't even use that word. It's going to signal the stopping or the termination of the mRNA strand. So we have a sequence of specific bases of mRNA, but of course we're not done yet. That We talk about this as needed to be processed. So the new strand of mRNA 
is sometimes referred to as pre-RNA, but it's, it is not quite processed, not quite ready to be turned into or be used to build proteins. So we have two types of, um, two types of portions of the RNA molecule. Exons are the expressed regions. So this is actually going to be coded um, into an, an amino acid and uh, amino acid sequence and eventually, well, down the road into a trait or into the phenotype. The introns, the intervening regions, are the non-coding portions of the mRNA molecule. And so these need to basically be, they need to be taken out. We've got to get rid of the drunk and then we will, we will link together the actual coding regions. This process is referred to as mRNA splicing. So again, it's almost this simple. Uh, we just take out the introns. The, um, a particular enzyme is going to recognize these and essentially just cut them out. And then we can, um, then we can splice together. It's like splicing a couple electrical wires together. We can splice the actual exons together into a functional um, into a functional unit that will then code for proteins. As you note, in normal circumstances, there's never a mistake in the DNA. Um, the sequence, again, in ideal situations, the sequence is very specific. The order of nucleotide bases in a DNA molecule is specific for you and I. The, if that's true, then the order of bases in the mRNA strand is going to be also specific. So any little change in the any little change in the sequence is then going to throw off the final product. So what's written here, what's shown here in the in the brown letters, each one of these represents an, a, a specific amino acid. And together, that's a polypeptide chain or eventually is going to be a protein. So maybe it's the protein for the um, pigment that is produced in the iris of your eye. The, the order of bases, if it changes, as you note from the top to the bottom in the yellow box, if there, there is a change, well, it's actually going to throw off the order of the amino acids. If it throws off the order of the amino acids, then it's going to throw off the order of um, the finished product. Much like if you... If you talk in sentences and you're as articulate like I am, and then all of a sudden words you change around in sentences talk when you do, you sound like Yoda and you kind of get a, a different finished product. Along with the processing that goes on in the mRNA to remove the uh, non-coding regions, to remove the, the uh, introns from the RNA, there's also two other processing um, steps. And basically, they both, they both really protect the mRNA, um, basically just to keep it intact and to keep it from unraveling. Um, the, the first thing is a 5' prime GTP cap, or a 5' prime cap, sometimes it's just referred to. GTP is a specialized nucleotide um, actually um, guanine that has three phosphates attached to it, so it's guanine triphosphate. But a five prime cap um, is added on one end and, and on the end is a, um, a poly A tail. So a, a multiple, multiple, multiple um, nucleotides that are, that are uh, tagged on to the end. So what we've done here is we've described the first step in going from a gene to a finished product of a protein. And what we've done is we've taken the code from the DNA molecule and we've transcribed it by a process called transcription into the decoder, into an mRNA strand. Remember, the mRNA single strand is going to be able to take the code to the factory, to the ribosome, where the proteins are going to be built by linking um, specific amino acids uh, into order to get a protein. And those proteins are going to eventually be the phenotype for the individual traits that we have. Again, so make sure that you stop and you rewind and you go and revisit and rewatch the these portions of, of the video to, to really nail down this first process of going from gene to protein.